TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli officials staunchly reject Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's analogy of the Russian invasion into Ukraine to the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany against helpless Jews during World War II. The Yemeni Houthi militia, which is an Iranian proxy, claims responsibility for a deliberate ballistic missile and UAV attack against civilian infrastructure in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Israel calls upon the United States not to give in to Iran's demand to remove the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the State Department's designated list of foreign terrorist organizations. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky acknowledged Israel's sympathy to Ukraine's humanitarian plight, yet in tandem also voiced a scathing rebuke of Jerusalem over the absence of military support for Kiev's defensive struggle to withstand Russia's military offensive. In a televised address to Israel's parliament or Knesset in Hebrew, the Ukrainian head of state urged Israeli lawmakers to become more proactive in support for his country. President Zelensky, a member of Ukraine's Jewish minority, whose grandfather served as a colonel in the Red Army during World War II, further utilized his address to the parliament of the Jewish state for the purpose of drawing an analogy between the Russian offensive and the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany during the Holocaust. Там звучать навіть терміни такі, як які звучали тоді. Це трагедія. Коли нацистська партія йшла в Європу і хотіла знищити все, знищити всіх, хотіли підкорити народ і не залишити від нас, від вас нічого, і навіть імені і сліду. Вони називали це остаточним рішенням єврейського питання. While sympathetic to Kiev's humanitarian plight, the comparison made between the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the so-called final solution has drawn a scathing rebuke from Jerusalem's leadership, which fervently rejects the historic detached analogy. Nevertheless, while Israel refuses to recklessly sever its relations with Russia, which could inevitably have far-reaching implications for Israel's security on its northern front, it continues to stand by Ukraine via extensive support of humanitarian aid. Alongside logistical convoys of Israeli-donated humanitarian provisions entering Ukraine daily, a state ceremony was held at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport this morning, from which an Israeli medical delegation embarked on an open-ended expedition to western Ukraine where Israel is setting up a field hospital to treat Ukrainians in need of medical attention. Speaking to the medical delegation before departure, Premier Naftali Bennett and Foreign Minister Yair Lapid underscored Israel's moral responsibility to help alleviate the suffering of Ukrainian civilians, all the while ensuring that Jerusalem's national security interests are carefully preserved. ישראל מושיטה את ידה לסיוע במשבר באוקראינה מזה כמה שבועות, ממש מהרגע הראשון באפיקים שונים ומגוונים. אנחנו מנהלים את המשבר המצער הזה בצורה רגישה, נדיבה ואחראית, תוך איזון השיקולים השונים ומורכבים. אנחנו ממש מהימים הראשונים הוצאנו מטוסי סיוע עם טונות רבות של ציוד, ציוד רפואי, תרופות ודברים אחרים. אנחנו קולטים כאן עולים, קולטים כאן זכאי חוק שבות וגם שאינם. כבר חמישה עשר אלף אוקראינים נכנסו למדינת ישראל, אנחנו פותחים את דלתנו, דלתותינו עד יעבור זעם כדי לתת להם מזור. אנחנו עושים את זה למען הילדים האוקראינים, אבל גם הילדים שלנו. צריכים לדעת שמדינת ישראל אינה עומדת מנגד. במקום שבו יש סבל ואימה, אנחנו נושיט יד מנחמת ונעשה הכל כדי לעזור. אנחנו שולחים עם בית החולים הזה לא רק את 
הצוותים הרפואיים הטובים ביותר בעולם, אלא גם את ליבנו, את התמיכה שלנו, את ההזדהות שלנו. זו מלחמה אכזרית ומיותרת, והיא צריכה להיפסק. It is important to point out that Jerusalem regards Russia as its northern neighbor since Moscow's sway over Damascus is undisputed. Nevertheless, in last week's congressional committee hearing on national security challenges and U.S. military activities in the greater Middle East and Africa, outgoing U.S. Central Command commander General Kenneth McKenzie stressed that Russia's presence in Syria was purely opportunistic. Russia's... Uh obviously has a client state in Syria. They, they came in and uh, right after the beginning of the Civil War, uh, they've been there for quite a while. It allows them to do several things by being in there. First of all, it, it is op opportunistic. I don't see a long-term strategy in the Russian action. They've got an air base in western Syria. They've got a, a naval base in the eastern Mediterranean, which they had during the Cold War, I might add, so it's not a new thing necessarily. Uh, but it also gives them the opportunity to attempt a posture on the global stage and to throw sand in our gearbox. Again, it's an act of opportunity opportunism that is you know that we see is typical of a lot of Russian activity turning to the Arabian Peninsula where dozens of one-way unmanned aerial vehicles and ballistic missiles were fired from Yemen against civilian targets in Saudi Arabia in a deliberate attack which the Iranian Houthi proxy has unabashedly claimed responsibility for <laughs> كسر الحصار الثانية والتي شملت المرحلة الأولى منها قصف عدد من منشئات العدو السعودي الحيوية والحساسة التابعة لشركة أرامكو في عاصمة العدو السعودي الرياض ومنطقة ينبع ومناطق أخرى بدفعات من الصواريخ المجنحة والباليستية والطائرات المسيرة Despite the deliberate Houthi attack, no injuries were thankfully reported and Saudi Arabia's energy supplies continued uninterrupted. Moreover, the Saudi-led coalition battling the Iranian proxy announced that the attacks late Saturday and early Sunday were successfully intercepted. However, debris from the intercepted projectiles caused material damage. It is important to highlight that outgoing CENTCOM commander General Kenneth McKenzie had shed light on the state of war in Yemen during last week's congressional committee hearing, during which he stressed that Iran, which backs to Houthis by means of its Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, is not interested in ending the war. While the supply of humanitarian aid to Yemen has been imperfect and, uh, and not consistent, Throughout the long history of this crisis, Iran has never imported a single bag of rice or any other food stuff into Yemen. Yep. In fact, the only material they brought into Yemen is stuff designed to kill people. Yes. So we should just remember that. I don't believe it's in Iran's interest to end the war in Yemen. I think it's a fairly low-cost war for them. As you noted, it, it, it embarrasses Saudi Arabia, it embarrasses UAE, and I think they're, not, they're actually not motivated to do that right now. I think it is certainly in the Houthis' best interest to cut a deal. Mm -hmm. So the ball's sort of in their court. They have some opportunities. Mm -hmm. They need to seize those opportunities, because frankly, sir, I don't think those opportunities are going to be there forever. It is interesting to know that while on February 12, 2021, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken reversed a decision of his predecessor by revoking the designation of Ansar Allah, which is the Arabic reference for the Houthis, from the list of foreign terrorist organizations, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan acknowledged in a statement last night that the Houthis' launch of ballistic missiles and suicide drones against civilian infrastructure in Saudi Arabia are in fact terrorist attacks with enabling by Iran, which supplies them with missile and UAV components, training and expertise. Nevertheless, despite Sullivan's acknowledgement speaking volumes, a senior Israeli official told TV7 on condition of anonymity that Washington's reported intentions vis-à-vis -vis the Houthis' so-called enablers renders its rebuke void of substance. The official further echoed remarks made by Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett during a weekly cabinet meeting held yesterday in which he voiced the alarm over American intentions to remove the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps from the U.S. State Department's list of foreign terrorist organizations. 
אנחנו מודאגים מאוד מכוונתה של ארצות הברית להיענות לדרישה האיראנית החצופה ולהוציא את משמרות המהפכה מרשימת ארגוני הטרור, ה-FTO. תראו, משמרות המהפכה הם ארגון הטרור הגדול והרצחני בעולם. בניגוד לדאעש או ארגונים אחרים, עומדת מאחוריו מדינה, איראן. זאת לא רק בעיה ישראלית. מדינות נוספות, בעלות בריתה של ארצות הברית באזור, מתמודדות יום יום, שעה שעה, מול ארגון הטרור הזה. בשנים האחרונות הם ממש מתפרעים, ירו טילים על מדינות שלוות, שולחים כטב"מים לעבר ישראל ולעבר מדינות אחרות וגם לעבר כוחות אמריקאים. גם כעת משמרות המהפכה, ארגון הטרור הזה, מנסה לרצוח ישראלים ואמריקאים מסוימים ברחבי העולם. לצערנו אנחנו רואים נחישות לחתום על הסכם הגרעין עם איראן כמעט בכל מחיר. כולל לומר על ארגון הטרור הגדול בעולם שהוא לא ארגון טרור. זהו מחיר יקר מדי. אבל חשוב לי לומר, גם אם תתקבל ההחלטה המצערת הזאת, מדינת ישראל תמשיך להתייחס למשמרות המהפכה כאל ארגון טרור ותמשיך לפעול נגדו כמו שפועלים מול ארגוני טרור. כרגיל, מה שיקבע את עתידנו הם הפעולות שלנו ולא מילים. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's daily prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you this evening to pray for the situation revolving Russia and Ukraine, in addition to prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hessen wishing you a Shavua Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.